Previously, the Fire Bear Gang boss instructed his son to take a seat. Ji Ung was curious about the situation and Gai Sang told him to remain still. Gai Sang was about to cut his hair, causing Ji Ung to question why. He asked if Gai Sang even knew how to cut hair in the same style as his, but Gai Sang confidently claimed to be an expert in hairstyles. Despite Ji Young's skepticism, his father reassured him that there was nothing to worry about and that Gai Sang cuts his hair all the time. Ji Young was taken aback when his father informed him that he needed to show others he had become the Fire Bear's successor. He encouraged Ji Young to trust Gai Sang. With closed eyes, Ji Young allowed Gai Sang to cut his hair. Gai Sang did his best, and once he finished, Ji Young slowly opened his eyes and gazed into the mirror. He was pleased with the results of the haircut. His father suggested that changing into new clothes would make Ji Ung look even better, and Gai Sang offered to take care of it. Ji Ung expressed his gratitude, and his father hugged him, thanking him for living up to his expectations. Ji Ung then suggested they eat, and his father instructed Gai Sang to bring the present. As Gai Sang is about to open the briefcase, Ji Ung worries if it might contain another knife, but he is surprised to find a case filled with medicine instead. His father and Gai Sang explained to him that the waxing and hairspray used on his hair increases the risk of hair loss and advised him to take the medicine to avoid ending up like Gai Sang. When he goes downstairs, all of the uncles are taken aback by his new haircut and compliment him on how great it looks. He invites his friends to eat, and they are all shocked by his hair. Li Yi Ji is stunned to see that Ji An now resembles the boss of the Fire Bear Gang. As Li Yi Ji snaps photos of the food, Du Park impatiently tells her to grab a seat next to Jian at the table before someone else takes the spot. During the meal, Mian Jun asks Jian about his plans now that he has defeated the Super Eshol Alliance. Jian reflects on his journey, starting out as a kind person for 10 years, only to become a bad person to follow in his father's footsteps and make him proud. Despite losing Su Jin, he has accepted the changes and has a new group of important people in his life. Ji Ung declares that his new objective is to fulfill the role of the Fire Bear successor and meet his father's expectations. He knows that the path ahead will be full of challenging obstacles, but he is ready to face them with the support of his friends and family, who are all willing to help him along the way. As Gai Sang finishes sweeping up the hair, his boss asks him what he hates the most. Gai Sang starts shaking as he mentions that he hates liars. The boss then questions Gai Sang about where he went and why he came late, causing Gai Sang to panic. He remembers what Jay Wook said about keeping it a secret, otherwise the Fire Bear Gang would collapse. Nervously, Gai Sang lies and mentions that he was patrolling Ji Young's school road. Although the boss knows Gai Sang is lying, he realizes that there must be a reason for it. He wonders if Jay Wook is up to something and questions why he went down to the countryside without any reason. As the boss takes his leave, he tells Gai Sang to take care of the young master, which he promises to do. The boss is proud of Jay Wook for taking care of family matters. Meanwhile, Jay Wook is having a meal with one of the young master's siblings, Ji Duke, who is 17 years old. Jay Wook explains to him that Siwon is trying to make another sibling the successor, which surprises him as he heard rumors that Ji Young would become the successor. In a fit of rage, Ji Duke stands up and claims that Siwon is a betrayer. Ji Duke suggests that they visit Ji Young together to help him become the successor, but Jay Wook politely declines the offer, thanking Ji Duke and saying that he may need his help later but not now. Ji Duke reminds Jay Wook of Ji Ung's childhood nickname, which he thought was Angel, but it was actually Devil because Ji Ung was a menace in press school. Ji Duke shares how Ji Ung protected him during that time, and it was an important memory for him. Ji Ung would stand up for Ji Duke when he was teased for not having a mother. However, after Ji Ung said he needed to protect a certain girl which we know was Su Jin, they lost contact. Ten years later, Ji Duke found out that he had more siblings and that he needed to compete with them to become the successor. If Ji Young doesn't become the successor, Ji Duke will become the successor. Meanwhile, Yang Gan shows up at the house and is surprised by Ji Young's new haircut. Ji Young asks Gai Sang how he's so good at cutting hair when he's bald, which shocks everyone. However, Gai Sang claims that he too once had precious hair. Zhang Siuk wonders where Dae En is but it turns out she was sleeping with Han Gom after playing together. As they prepare to leave, Li Yi Ji asks if she can hug the bear. Han Gom jumps into her arms, and she is surprised by how fluffy he is. Gai Sang watches, feeling jealous as Han Gom doesn't act the same way when he hugs him. Meanwhile, as Jay Wook arrives outside, he calls for Gai Sang to join him. Jay Wook asks if he caught Kim Min Woo, and Gai Sang confirms that he did. They walk towards Kim Min Woo's. As they enter the lair, Gai Sang's followers greet them. They are curious about the person with Gai Sang, 
and he introduces Jay Wook as the one he serves. They are all surprised but immediately greet him. Jay Wook mentions that they are the younger brothers of the Fire Bear Gang, and Dae Huang is happy that he made the right choice last time. As Jay Wook notices Kim Min Woo, who is tied up and bloodied, he demands that he explain Si Wan's plan in detail. However, Kim Min Woo insists that Si Wan had no involvement and apologizes, saying it was his own decision. Jay Wook questions how Kim Min Woo can be certain that he won't be killed by Si Wan if he returns in his current state. When Kim Min Woo remains uncooperative, Jay Wook orders Guy Sang to educate him, and he kicks him in his broken leg, causing him to scream out in agony. Despite the pain, Kim Min Woo maintains that C1 was not involved. After a second kick to the other leg breaks his bone and renders him unconscious, Jay Wook turns to the other members and threatens them with the same treatment if they refuse to confess. As they all shout at once, claiming that C1 was involved, Guy Sang becomes annoyed and slaps them, demanding that they speak one by one. Jay Wook warns that their lives depend on the words they say next. When Kim Min Woo regains consciousness, Jay Wook questions if he's still willing to act alone, but Kim Min Woo realizes he will die anyway while protecting C1. Then Jay Wook surprises him by mentioning that he knows about his younger brother, Gon Woo. This shocks Kim Min Woo, who wonders how Jay Wook could know about him. Jay Wook points out that C1 will go after his brother, making Kim Min Woo realize that he acted carelessly by involving Gon Woo in the operation and that he has failed unexpectedly. Jay Wook presents a solution for both of them to survive, but Kim Min Woo is unsure of what it could be. Jay Wook then proposes that Kim Min Woo continue as C One's right hand man while keeping their discussion and the current situation a secret. In return, Kim Min Woo will report to Jay Wook about all of C One's actions. After hesitating, Kim Min Woo ultimately agrees to the terms. Guy Sang then pulls out his razor, as Jay Wook says he has made his decision. As they shave his hair, Jay Wook suggests letting his followers grow their eyebrows out, making them cry tears of joy. Guy Sang is annoyed with how happy they are getting, but they notice and quickly get back into line. After Guy Sang finishes shaving his head, Jay Wook asks if he knows what to say to Simon. Kim Min Woo states that he will tell him he was in a car accident and shaved his head as a fashion statement for his side job. Jay Wook is pleased with the story and takes his leave, asking to speak to Guy Sang outside. Jay Wook explains that if he wants to raise good followers, he has to treat them sometimes. He also mentions that they now have an advantage since Kim Min Woo is on their side, and they will know Si Wan's next moves. Jay Wook asks Guy Sang if they were to become enemies with Si Wan, would he be able to fight him, to which Guy Sang claims he could. However, Jay Wook then shocks him by asking if he would be able to kill Si Wan, to which Guy Sang says he can. Jay Wook pauses with a serious face for a second before claiming that he's just joking and that it won't get to that point. He then asks Guy Sang to listen to what he says and thanks him for everything before taking his leave. As Guy Sang enters the lair, he orders his followers to release Min Wu. But as they untie him, Min Wu collapses to the ground, screaming in pain as both of his legs are broken. Despite his pleas for an ambulance, they ignore him. On the floor, Min Wu begs for help. Eventually, he is taken to the hospital and placed in a bed next to his brothers. Meanwhile, some of the Red Dragon gang members discuss Kim Min Woo, with one member claiming he is taking care of Guy Sang himself and that there won't be any problems. However, Taebong Jang questions whether that plan makes sense, suggesting that they may have to resort to Plan B if Min Woo fails. Meanwhile, while speaking with his followers, Guy Sang announces his plan to create a secret service unit to protect the young master. Although they express gratitude, Guy Sang believes they are too weak and lack fighting power. He reveals that Kim Min Woo will be joining them soon as number 5. Guy Sang orders them to fight among themselves to determine their rank between 1 to 5, causing panic. However, he assures them that they will have plenty of time to get stronger since Kim Min Woo is in the hospital with both legs broken. Guy Sang prepares to take them to Fire Bear Mountain. Please read the pinned comment about the next part.